<laughs> pop-ups. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're in an Acura NSX 1991 with the one and only Fenton Sun for the Zygreen YouTube channel. Go give him some love. Link in the description. Mr. Honda himself. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Have you ever driven a manual car before? <laughs> this is my first time. I hope I don't stall too many times or burn your clutch. So, Mr. Honda, Fenton Sun himself, Tell me about your experience with Hondas, because I know you've you've had multiple Honda S2000s, you now have an NSX, you've had a Civic Si in the past. Yeah. What keeps you coming back to Honda? It's it's multiple reasons, but one of the big reasons is that VTEC, baby. That VTEC! There it is. 5,800 RPM in this car, I believe, is that right? Uh, 5,000 is when it kicks in, but you don't feel it. It's a very, um, it's a very smooth changeover in this car. You know, when I first drove your car, I drove this almost a year ago, I'd say. Yeah. I didn't get it. I actually felt a little bit disappointed by the NSX because I felt like it was... I hyped it up so much in my head. It's like, oh, this is a super pure driving experience and it's so rewarding and, you know, driving it, I was like, well, this car isn't that easy to push hard. It's not as rewarding when you push it hard. Yeah. The steering wheel is pretty slow. The gears are super long. You can't really rev it out, at least on these uh, twisty roads that we drive on. And you have done some mods to the car. I think it's less the mods, even because the mods were suspension and brakes. Yeah. We can talk about that shortly. You haven't changed the steering. You haven't changed uh, the gear ratios. Right. But I have much more appreciation for the car now than I did before. And I think the reason... This car is, when you see it as like a pretty awesome, sporty GT, GT-ish sports car, rather than Razor Edge S2000 kind of fighter. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's, it's, a lot of people think of, they talk about the S2000 and NSX in the same breath, but they're actually way, way more different than you might think if you haven't driven both. The NSX, like you described, is more of a comfortable GT sports car slash, you know, supercar that you can drive every day in relative comfort and still enjoy a 7 tenths back road drive or an occasional track day. Whereas the S2000, for me at least, this doesn't apply to everyone, but for me, I only like driving that car at the limit. Below the limit, it doesn't make sense to me because stiff ride, high NVH levels, very cramped interior. Uh, it's just not a very approachable car to drive on the street, whereas this car is. And that's, that's a key differentiator between the two cars that a lot of people don't quite understand. And maybe that's one of the reasons why you had a certain expectation of this car having driven S2000s when you actually drove it it didn't feel anything like an S2000. Well said, well said. I feel like the S2000 eggs you on, and you, I agree that it's it's also easier to approach the limit than this car, and I think part of that is just the FR platform. Yeah. FRs tend to be a little bit more predictable. MRs are, this is a pretty approachable MR by all means, but I don't feel as comfortable pushing this as I do with most S2000s, yeah. personally. Yeah. Oh yeah, buttery smooth double, double clutch right there. I love this transmission, it's so, it's like this and the S2000 are the two best gearboxes that I've used. They're the best, 100%. GT3s come close, but I, I would say this is still my favorite for relaxed shifting. S2000 is the best for like, you know, those really aggressive double downshifts on yeah, track. I, I, I got frustrated by the shifter the first time I drove because I was going too aggressive. I was yeah. going too fast with the shifts. It doesn't like to be hurried. Yeah. But the 997 GT3, I remember watching a review where someone said that it's the best, you know, sub 100K, the S2000, and over 100K, the uh, the NSX, had the, or the uh, 997 GT3 had the best shifter. Yeah. And driving that, I'm like, eh, I don't know, man. I think that these are, the, the, Honda, the Honda transmissions are superior in my mind. Yeah, I think so too. At least the Honda rear wheel drive shifters. Correct, Their yeah. front drive shifters are good, but within the realm of front drive. 100% agree. The Civic Type R, even the modern ones, nowhere near as good as this or the S2K. Yeah. So tell me about the 
tell us about the mods that you did on this car. Yeah, so the overall theme for this build is OEM Plus. So I don't want the car to feel like it shouldn't have come from the factory this way. Now that's with the exception of this loud ass exhaust. <laughs> but if you feel everything else about the car, the Owens suspension, uh, the, the Owens DFE from Saki Bomb Garage, with a mild eight kilogram front, six kilogram rear spring rate. We got the AP Racing front brakes, uh, custom rear rotors, some mild, fairly mild DS2500 Ferrodo brake pads. The brakes are a big upgrade from stock. Big I, upgrade from stock. Stock is so under braked and uh, driving this on the twisties earlier today, I felt much more confidence yeah. in the brakes. And the Ferrodo DS2500s, I think they're fantastic hybrid pads if you're gonna do both uh, street and a little bit of track. Yeah, I would agree with that. And again, it, it, even down to the pad choice, it, it's, it's all in line with that OEM Plus feel. Um, like the suspension is a lot tighter than stock, but I mean, it's still fairly comfortable. It soaks up the bumps. It's not overly stiff. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm not planning to do any other extreme mods to it. Would you ever, would you ever address the, the longer gear ratios with the, uh, with either the final drive change from the, the, from the NSX Type R in yeah. Japan or shorter gear ratios overall? I would love to. That would be my my number one mod for the NSX that I would recommend to anyone. But it's just really hard to find a short gear set um, nowadays. I think the Type R Final Drive, you can still get one pretty easily. But that JDM 5-speed gear set is really hard to find. If you do find it with labor, with, with everything, and all the parts, you're looking at roughly a ten to $15,000 job. Wow. So hard to justify That's a that. lot of cheddar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the steering ratio, I'm actually used to it now, and I think it's, it's totally fine for that more GT sports car rather than Razor Edge S2000 kind of sports car. Right. Um, do people ever change the steering ratio on these cars? The only way I think you can really do that that I've seen is by retrofitting um, a Honda S2000 EPS rack. I see. People have done that. Not a whole lot of people have done that, but I know it's possible. I've never driven one. I don't know what, what it feels like, but I would imagine it just, it would remove a lot of the steering feel that this car is known for. This is just teeming with feedback. I love that. It's just such an unadulterated, unfiltered manual rack. Yeah, unfiltered the, is a great word. Am I in the right lane? Yeah, left lane. Okay. Oh, uh, you can turn the headlights on too. This? Yeah. Haha, <laughs> 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 pop-ups. This time, sorry. <laughs> God, I love that. Old school cool. And this really is an everyday supercar. Look at us. Driving around this downtown Livermore area here in Northern California. It's raining. I'm comfortable. I'm not too concerned. Right? We have a uh, climate control that actually works. Oh, wow. This car has climate control? It does. That's insane, dude. Not dual zone, but hey. Still. 1991. That's very impressive. You know, when the car came out, it it was quick. But it wasn't the fastest thing. Zero yeah. to sixty five point two seconds, quarter mile in thirteen point seven. Yeah. With a trap right. speed of one oh six. How did you know that? I'm just you know <laughs> <laughs> Top speed of one sixty two. <laughs> But, but back then, and even more today, that doesn't really capture the spirit of this car, because there's so much to this car beyond the spec sheet. A lot of people, they're like, oh, you know, but uh, Hyundai this or uh, whatever that is faster, and it's like, that's not the point of these cars. Yeah, it's completely missing the point. For one of those people that, that may not understand what the driving experience is like, how would you summarize it? What What is the... What is the joy that this car brings? I feel like it's just an all-encompassing sort of, I wouldn't say sensory overload, but it, it touches all of the senses in, in a sort of delicate way. Like, you're feeling so much about the road texture through the steering wheel, you're enjoying the shifter, so your hands are always busy. The, the 
pedals, you know, pretty communicative clutch, a heavier throttle pedal. You have to be very deliberate. Um, you know, obviously with downshifting because of the manual transmission, you're always active. And then you also feel everything on the road through the seat, right? Like the, the chassis transmits a lot of information through your spine, really. That's like the only way I can really describe it. Similar to a Lotus Elise, but that car is a sensory overload in that sometimes you want it to just be a little bit more dialed back than it is. Um, that car, you have to be driving really hard to really appreciate it. This car, you can kind of just feel all of those things at a lower speed. Like, we're not driving it hard at all right now. Yeah, I'm you can feeling still everything. appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And then the visibility, the feeling of being in this, like, almost fighter jet-like cockpit. Inspired by the F-16. By the F-16, that's right. I think the key word there, I mean, so beautifully said, the key word that stuck out to me is delicate. Yeah. I think it's a delicate and precise Japanese driving experience. It really comes across that way. There's a certain level of joy and pleasure with every shift, like the, the viewer probably is noticing that I'm just shifting it constantly just for yeah. shits and giggles, even though I don't need to. I'm trying to I'm trying out my double clutching. It just it encourages me to to be engaged with the car, to to play with it. And I'm not even driving the car hard at all. It's yeah, still just it's, a... Yeah, I would say it's a car that... It has character. It has character, and it has character at any speed. That's the difference between this and a lot of other, I would say, driver-focused car nowadays, is that this car has character even if you're just putting around town. But yeah, like this car at the limit, you can make it feel amazing if you put the right mods on it but it's a car that I don't even have to necessarily push to that point to enjoy it. And that's, that's saying something because I love the Ragged Edge, um, you know, getting to the Ragged Edge in something like my BRZ or an S2000. But this car I can enjoy more of the time by not always being at the Ragged Edge. I get that, that's so well said. Now this versus an example that is modded to more closely emulate an NSX Type R, what would be the key differences in the driving experience? I think a lot of it is, is down to the weight savings of a lot of those examples that I've driven. You can save 300 pounds on this car, which is wow. only a 3,000 uh, 3, pound 10 car. 10% savings, with. yeah. Yeah, if you do the right mods. Um, similarly, the, the short gears make a huge difference. Where do and most then, of those weight savings come from, do you know? The seats, um, thinner rear glass, suspension wheels, brakes. Um, you can also do a lot of fiberglass or carbon you know, panels on the car as well. Um, there's quite a few places you can save weight, like a, a lighter exhaust, a lighter header, lighter intake. Um, all of those things add up like enormously. And I've driven a car, an, an NSX, with um, all those weight saving measures done it tipped the scales at 2,700 pounds. It had the short gears. It had JRZ suspension. Everything I would have done to my car if I wanted that kind of car. And that car, even in the canyons, was a riot to drive. It feels more like a mid-engine S2000. Oh, wow. Sense. That sounds enticing. probably would address a little bit of the the speed that you might be hoping for in a car like this. Yeah. Right? Because the power isn't so overwhelming that you can get away with having long gearing. Yeah. The, US, the, the USDM gearing really dulls the straight line performance. Like those numbers that you said earlier, the zero to 60 quarter mile, all that stuff, pretty sure that's for a Japanese spin. This one, add like half a second to everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. The other thing that really stands out to me, you know, they say this was inspired by the F-16. You really get that though. It has this long sloping windshield, really open space here. It feels quite open for a, a supercar, right? The J 
Japanese supercar is so open up here. Down here, it's very purposeful and very intentional with its design. Center console and the tunnel over here. But this, I mean, apart from the exhaust, this truly yeah. is a car that you can drive every day and appreciate. It's, it's a nice place to be, a nice cabin. So I used to own uh, a 2006 Porsche came in at the same time that I had the NSX. And outside of the exhaust, this was a far softer riding and quieter car at freeway speeds than a, what, 15-year-old Newark came in. Wow, I'm surprised by that. Was that on OEM suspension? OEM everything. Wow, that's really surprising. It's a shame, these things are already at 70k plus now. Yeah. And they're only going up from here. Hard to justify if you're looking for numbers. But as a driving experience, I still think... I, w I, I, I won't say this is second to none, but for my use case and how I like to enjoy the car, it is actually second to none. That's fantastic. That's awesome to hear. Any other future mods planned for this car? Save up for the short gears, baby. Like, that's that's, that's going to be a game changer. Yeah. yeah, we drove Jimmy's NSX in LA a couple weeks ago. That was like... That really, very substantial change to the driving experience. That really dials things kiss. in. Chef's kiss. Chef's kiss, indeed. Well, Fenton, thanks a lot for letting me drive your car. Thanks for the, uh... Dude, I was trying to figure out how the f*** <laughs> to do this. <laughs> thanks for letting us... Thanks for letting me drive your car. Thanks for letting me review it. And if you guys haven't already, make sure you follow him. Zygreen YouTube channel linked in the description. Much love, my friends. And I'll see you guys in the next one.